cool. So I think in the tour with Nicolas, uh, I gave you more or less, I would say, the permaculture principles. What more or less the difference between regenerability, sustainability, and erosion, and uh, a tool for designing, which was zoning. Do you remember zoning? Yeah. Cool. But I never really, really explained what's a design. <laughs> I've, been, I've been using this poster for two years. <laughs> and this card. <laughs> okay, so. It's okay, I will clean it. It's been through a lot. Uh, so let's talk about design. Who of here have uh, participated in either designing a land or has been has been a client that has been designed as a land design? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> you see that we we co-designed one land that I'm showing right now here. Ah, please. Uh, Prisida? No. Prisida, would Tina, you like? I, I know you, you are so famous. <laughs> 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 Great. I have watched that in YouTube, I did good. Oh, oh uh, uh, sign up. <laughs> sign up there. I, I didn't you have to that. bring the book I gave you so that she signed it for you because it's, ah, the, tra it's the translator. But you have to find three yes. words. Ah. <laughs> It's okay, oh. next time, you see that we are here. <laughs> so, uh, let me talk about the design we are doing with Hersida right now. Okay, so when we are talking about design, we have a landscape and uh, more or less what you would like to have as a beginning is a topographic map. Okay, and visiting the place and a satellite map so you can have it from above. Let's say that a very not uh, accurate uh, satellite image of the land it looks like that you can get from google earth you can go screenshot this and take it and start working with that if you want very accurate maps you have to pay for it so but you can work your way around it uh, so the land we are actually designing it's uh, it doesn't seem so here Do you, can you understand if this is a flat place <coughs> or an inclinated place no no this is what I told you. If you have a 2D map, you cannot really understand what are we talking about. But you can understand where there are trees, where there are buildings, and this is equally uh, important. Okay? So, this is a draft that I was designing some stuff on it. This is not the final design. I'm showing you drafts because the final design is digital. Uh, so, these lines here are what Nicolas was saying, the contour lines. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are lines that show how much the, the different points of this line are uh, away from the sea. So, altitude. Here I have 11.4 altitude, and in the next ones I have 11.2, 12.2, 12.6. What do I get here? That this land is inclinated. Okay, it actually has around 25 or 30 percent of. Inclinated. Yeah. Inclination. Oh. Inclination. So from a map like that, with the contour lines, you can actually understand what are we talking about, even if you haven't been to the place. So with a combination of a contour map and a satellite map, theoretically you could design the land by also interviewing the person who wants to use the land. I would say that's not the best practice, but it can be done. The best practice is to go there, have an interview. <laughs> Tina has prepared an amazing uh, interview uh, questions uh, that is very detailed on what the person needs. So the design is a response to what the person who wants to use the land for. Okay, it's not the idea of the designer that is being imposed to the land. It's actually a co-design between the person who will use the land and the designer. Okay, and then design means actually putting swales, putting where the water, you can do many different, uh, how to say, imprints of first it can be a water design, first can be a soil management, another one could be the access, if you remember the different types of design in the scale of permanence. 
well, it's not the best example, but anyway, you can see a design where we put structures, when we put the paths, where there is trees, where you put compost, where you put different raised beds, swales, etc., etc. So, what's the legend down about? The, la the, the legend? The, I don't know. The legend. 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 Eh, it's in Greek, first of all, so I cannot really yeah, yeah, translate. That's why. <laughs> so it says like here's a kiosk. Here there is some raised beds for disabled people. Okay. Here is some raised beds for uh, like it's also it's on the ground. Uh -huh. uh, there is some compost. Uh, there is swales here that they are planted. And where, is, the, where is the zero zone? Is in the center? The zero zone. Yeah. Ah, I had like this doesn't show all the, the tools that okay. have been used. This is the final product. Mm -hmm. The zoning and scale of permanence, etc. There are tools for designing it. What you are gonna hand out, what I will probably give at some point to Hesida would be when we print it and put it out in the field. Uh, it's gonna be the final, uh, the final design with no all the process inside. Mm -hmm. But if I am very professional, I would hand out the PDF, which has all the work that I have been done and all the steps that I have been following in order to give my layers. By layers, a, by layers and seeing diff and also close-ups and zoom outs etc etc okay, okay? Uh, i just wanted to comment the who was in the exercise yesterday where we were just using the a-frame to design yeah so the the contours the contour lines show exactly that what what you guys measured in the workshop yesterday okay and there's many ways also to see where the contour lines are, etc. I'm not going to be entering a lot in that because that's more Nicola's field in water management. But my field also, and I feel kind of, when I talk about permaculture, I cannot really not mention what is a design because that's all about, is to show some kind of a design, okay? And that's a design about land. What we are going to be talking about uh, today, it's more social permaculture design. For me, it was something really vague because also there is very few bibliography actually on that. So um, we are actually the ones who call ourselves social permaculturists. We're actually working on a quite a vague area of what we are actually doing. And it's very exciting, if you ask me, because there is many designers about land who have lots of work to show you around and you can learn from that but on social permaculture there's very few people who you can learn from like Luby, McNamara etc etc and um, so because I am doing my diploma at the Italian Permaculture Academy on a uh, design of an eco village and we have been talking with my mentor about what is actually social permaculture and a design what could it look like what we got to is that actually it's more of mapping and connections okay so I'm gonna be talking about that here. What, for me, it's more social permaculture design. Okay, here, first I will give you an example of what a mind mapping means. Are you familiar with mind mapping? Mind. Yeah, Danny, yes. It's taking your mind, taking out things and mapping them on a piece of paper or, di or uh, digital, okay? It's visualization actually. Oh, okay. okay. So here I am uh, right now supposedly working on, but very part-time, on uh, designing the social part of the eco-village that is happening in the middle of Greece, of uh, my cousin in Nesonas. So I took an interview from, uh, with him and I start mind mapping the uh, information I got from him. Okay, so what's your need? What is the people living here? How many residents you would like to have in the eco village, etc., <coughs> etc. Et so a first map would be. <laughs> a first map would be to map actually who are the current residents and how many residents would be. So the client, the person who actually interviewed, it's in the middle. That's Christos. That's also his name. It's Christos. Uh, not very smart <coughs> anyway. Uh, it's not me. It's his. Uh, it's him. Cousin. It's my cousin. And uh, and then there is a uh, different people living in uh, the eco village uh, in the place right now, and they will move in the eco village when it's built. Here we have two question marks because the actual residence would be nine, and there is uh, seven at the moment. <coughs> so there is possible new incomers. And uh, in where I've done it digitally. I have connected the people, it's very complicated to do it now, with their different relationships that they have. 
One is the partner, that one is a friend, the other one they're working together, that one is ex-partners, the other ones are like friends from forever or they don't know really each other, etc. etc. So that's good because even if this is inside Christos' mind and Mara's mind and Thanasis' mind, etc. etc., by handing over that to people, it actually helps them a lot to bring consciousness and understanding of what's going on. So that's a tool for actually proposing solutions to social uh, challenges that you're finding in a design, okay? Is this... So no matter if we are just humans or groups or societies, we all are systems that consist of elements and it goes exponentially, you know? Me, I'm a system, my group is a system, my, uh, uh, my village is a system, and then it grows, it grows, it grows. Is it more understandable? Yeah. Cool. This is not a full design. This is just part of something that I could give out as a social design. My final result that I want from that is to reach out to all the aspects of an eco-village, which would be uh, what kind of structures would be there, what kind of working groups would be there, what kind of everyday routine they would be there, what kind of people do, what kind of roles they need in the eco village, map them out, and when there is a question mark, maybe propose an idea. Surely, uh, just a question about the, the order. I mean, in order to figure out the roles and everything like that, we need to be clear on what we're actually all gathering to do. Yeah, there's another mind map about the vision of the eco village. There's another mind map about the structures that already exist, etc., etc., etc. But you take that into consideration. Of yeah, that, of course. What's the, what's the purpose? I mean, like a lot of people. Just so, can I just say something? Uh, I was called to help with another eco village design in the Netherlands or something like that, and he said to me. Well, they built all the houses and everybody came here, but now we don't know what we're supposed to be doing. Mm. And I'm like, well, that should have been done beforehand. Um. So why are we gathering in this eco-village? What's our common purpose? For example, if I'm calling people to, I, I'm not creating an eco-village, but like in, if they want to be collaborating in the space where myself and Elias are, then uh, I would be inviting them around the concept of creating an eco-artistic school. Mm. So there'll be specific roles There'll be specific things that we'll be doing and, and that school will have specific things like having a kitchen, like as in a lab for experimenting with different types of processing food. So having something specific that we can present, even if it's a business plan, a vision, an idea, or a, a reason for being there. What's our purpose? What do we want to do? Just so that we know that we have this in common in order mm. to be able to move forward. Mm. It's not just a matter of living together. What are we mm. doing together? Mm. Yeah, and that's what we're designing to make that clear as well. Because mm. uh, it, it is very, very common in social structures that we just find ourselves together and we're struggling to be together, mm. but we don't know why we are there, how is our functional roles working. So bringing consciousness into that is one of the roles of the social permaculturist bringing in, in whatever groups we are in. And I think me and Tina always try to bring this consciousness in whatever groups we are in by using sociocracy, by using tools in general, not only from permaculture, but also from other fields. We are, bringing, we are try, trying to bring consciousness on what is actually happening. Because a lot of things is actually happening also right here in the space. And I can go analyzing half an hour of what has happened already in five minutes. Okay, so there's a lot of things happening, a lot of interaction between us humans. Mapping them and designing them is is for me, it's something that I feel uh, I've been doing it already before I meet social permaculture, mm. because that's how my mind works. Okay, so just social permaculture came and actually gave a name to what I was already doing. You mentioned sociocracy, and in an exercise in sociocracy that we did, in this kind of mapping, we uh, it's us where uh, lead to present our organizations by mapping by names but also by functions like like mm -hmm. uh, residents uh, buffers what else you know and how it was just after they explained the theory of types of power mm -hmm. how we relate each other in our organization if it's hierarchical or is more fluxus or flat yeah. but what are the pow uh, the powers that we are restrained to 
-hmm. which is power over. Power with. Power with, power to, mm -hmm. uh, power. And in my map, I put a legend of what power over was, what power, and that helps me to my mind to understand the interactions. So the greatest power over in my organization and here as well was the dogs. Mm. The dogs is a sort of conflict, you know, whenever it's a party, whenever you step in this, kind to put an example. And that helps to, to see how overcharged is one person in their functions mm -hmm. or not, or the opposite or this kind of thing. I'll give maybe another example about the social design. Is it going to be useful? Yeah. Is it useful? Okay. So let's talk, and I'm giving a spoiler about Evolving Cycles, which is an organization that me and Tina is in. And we actually co designed a social structure that started working. Now it's not working because we're lacking people, but uh, it was functioning as it was supposed to be functioning. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was a sociocratic organization working with circles. I don't know if you heard about sociocracy, so Tina will speak more about it soon. Uh, so, it's actually a mapping of people and groups. So here we have, let's say, people in a circle. And that's the, let's say, the central circle or the founding circle or the central council or you can do whatever words you would like. And then we have different departments. Let's say here is educational department. Here is the environmental circle. Here is the finances circle. Here is the communication circle. And here is the project circle. And uh, missing one. Let's... Marketing. Marketing. <laughs> you don't like it. The one I don't like, yes. Yeah. Uh, Did you so, do the funding? What? Yeah, I'm, I was in funding, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much the same. Um, so, I can go in more details and actually continue on designing because there is interaction between these two and these two. And there is people going back and forward. The things here I put is a double link, which means somebody from here is also in here and someone from here is also here. So there is exchange of information. And I can mess up with this. I can bring this circle inside here for some reason. I can bring this circle up here and combine it with this one. If it actually makes sense to make this organization more efficient. So what are we designing for? We are designing for energy efficiency between us. Okay. Another reason why we are designing these kind of things in sociocracy is that the flow of information is the most fluent one and is the most transparent one. And that's the vision of why we are doing this design. It could be another one. It could be that I want that people uh, actually are small groups. I don't want big groups. So I would redesign all this in smaller groups and smaller circles according to the purpose of what I am designing for. Does it get clearer and clearer a bit? Okay. I will go on concrete things. So maybe we can actually start talking about something which probably you can connect to something in your own personal life. So one nice day I had this question what is social permaculture? And I took a big piece of paper and I put all the things that I... Do you have Lutak or... Uh, or there is? I did, but... Does somebody have a tape or something? I know. I have pegs in my tent. I can go and get them. Thank you, Tina! Can I, can I ask? Yeah, of course. Um, one of my ways to, to learn, I think it's to repeat with my own words. Mm -hmm. um, so basically here, the drawing you've done, the middle is like the eco-village with all the people. Here or here? No, here. In this okay, one, let's say that this is an eco-village. Okay. okay, and the center is all the people forming the eco-village and then it's the other structures. And these people in the certain can also go in other circles like yes. education, yes. management. And... Yes. Okay. So you might have Chris in the middle and then Chris in one bowl and in yes. another one. Yes, and yes. And this is the link. Okay. Another one, maybe I can use one tool that I already showed you. There was an association that actually designed their association by zoning. Okay, you remember zoning? Okay, so the core group 
was just three people. Okay, three people. These are the people who are mostly engaged into this association. They might be also be the board of the association, but they are the ones who are putting the most energy inside this association. The more further out we're going in the circle, the less energy the, the people who are in the circle are putting. Okay. Does it make sense? Do you yeah. connect? Uh -huh. It's kind of like if you can transpass from space and ideas and you can connect these two because they're actually the same. What we are creating as humans is what actually the plants and the trees and uh, they are creating. We're just doing it in a different way and we think we're more conceptual and more uh, uh, intelligent. intelligent. But they're doing it already in a much better way. But anyway. So what we, are what we are trying to do here is to bring down the complexity of the relationship between humans in social permaculture, okay? So let's say that there is three people in this association, okay? These are the founders, these are the ones who put the most of the energy. And then there is another one, two, three, four, five, which are probably maybe employees. Okay? Mm -hmm. They are not the ones who had the idea of let's go and save the world, but they are one assist in that. And they are going to do as much as probably they are paid for or as much as they believe in that. And they are specialized as skilled They are specialized in yeah. that and yeah. they are not the vision keepers. They mm -hmm. are not the ones who would, let's say, I want this to happen. They are like, <laughs> yes, I want to help in that. Okay. And then there is friends and supporters who are members of the associations and they contribute maybe to some money every month or a year and they support the organization and sometimes take part in the actions of it. But they are not, you can see the difference between the founders and them, okay? And then maybe there is the city that they, the, or the town or the village which is this association is in. And there's people who have heard about this association they like this idea and sometimes they come and go and they uh, say yeah you're cool what you're saying i'm gonna post a facebook i'm gonna make a facebook post about that etc etc and this is something that these guys beforehand before this actually happens they already designed for it they knew that these three are gonna be here and they wanted circles around them because they felt that actually it's too little so just the, the three of us can do everything and they wanted that to happen and they created that so it's putting intention of where we're going not just things happening energy flows where attention goes exactly and if i was to describe in one word what permaculture or two words what permaculture is about i would say it's energy management mm. 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 a lot what did we call the third circle around the court the third circle, yes. it was uh, friends and acquaintances. Oh, okay. yeah. Supporters. Supporters. Friends, members, supporters. Mm -hmm. Cool. I would actually also add to energy time. time. Energy and time. Uh, time like when I'm is think... energy. Yeah. Mm. And doesn't exist in the other Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's another conversation. But time management, yes. Also, when talking about zoning, ah. how much energy and time it mm -hmm. takes yes. to reach out to mm -hmm. a resource. Mm. It's a resource. Of, resources, of, yes, resource coverable. It's it's, uh, it's my resource. Mm. I have twenty four hours inside a day. How much of this resource I'm using for this organization? It's a resource. But any single thing, it it can be other. The best example to me is the. Um, information or communication mm -hmm. the, probably in this structure the decision making it will happen for certain things in certain levels and for certain yes. things in this other, comes in energy in this kind of structure yeah. comes with power so if i'm putting more energy here i have more power to take decisions less power less power less power and less power and the formula of how this power is uh, balanced, distributed or expanded or not is communication because info is communication. If I know what we are going to do today and I don't proper share with the others, I'm a Hitler. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm, I'm, 
I, I got too, too much power on me and how we engage to to spread this power so how efficient we are in the ways that and the street uh, strategies and the dynamics that we use to communicate it it helps the flow to this power not being oh but you didn't tell me that how i'm supposed to do this thing because it's every day the same thing you know what i mean Ka kind of thing so, so it, this this yeah. kind of designs also help to be transparent if uh, if there is a member here who doesn't know what's uh, no, a member here or a person inside the city that would like to know what is the structure of this organization, somebody can give this visualization and say, here, here is the structure, here is the flow of energy, here is the flow of power, and I'm completely transparent on what I'm doing. Okay? Instead of giving a full statute of, let's say, 10 pages that actually explains this. So it's an energy efficient tool. Employees. Employees. Yes. Ναι, okay. And this is the male. Okay. So, the more energy they put in, the more they put in. So, there are founders, employees, and then supporters, visitors. Yeah, and then people around in the community, in the wider community. Okay. And what about volunteers? They could be uh, around uh, here or around here, depending on how much. Uh, okay. I'm just giving an example of yeah. one association. And I'm not giving you that, take that and do that. Be creative, take a piece of paper and design your own thing. If you are in a group, yeah. you can go on and play among in a, so many different ways of how you can visualize that. Mm. And bring in questions. What do I want from what I'm visualizing right now? Exactly, this is what I want to ask you. Like one yes. of the questions that should be... Yes, what in this therapy? one, my, my, my target for doing this, this small design, let's say, is visualizing the relationship of the elements of, of the people inside an eco-village. I call them elements mm -hmm. because they're elements for my design, but they're actual people. <laughs> okay, and this is the relationships. Yeah, when we are talking about social systems, humans become elements and they're not minimizing, they're important things. Yes. Okay, so this is, let's say, my purpose here is to visualize the relationships. Here is to visualize the energy flow. And you can go on. I also here, I brought in... Okay. Here, my... My purpose is to visualize time and put on steps on what is, is needed in order for something to happen. So let's say we are an organization and we're using Dragon Dreaming. Have everybody heard of Dragon Dreaming? No. Mm -hmm. no. no. It's an amazing technique, amazing te inspired by the indigenous people in Australia uh, of how to collectively design, a uh, first of all, uh, uh, make a vision, mm -hmm. find the steps toward it, and actually implement the project. If, if we can say it one sentence, it's alternative project management. This is what it is. Uh -huh. yeah. And there is a book online free, because uh, Erasmus project, another Erasmus project did it, the one that we have printed, so yeah. you can find it. The basic steps is 20 pages you can well, Can I yeah. make a slight adjustment to the word that you use instead of using alternative to say creative project <laughs> management? It, yes, yes, it can be creative. And start stigmatizing. Yeah. But it has also, no, no, but it has also this idea of community so that it's for me, it's more not only creative, it has also other, the other approach of the whole I want to enter in the conversation. To me, it's related to prey. To pray. Dreaming. Oh, it praying. got the same structure yeah. of pray. They say that whenever you pray, pray that it was already that you already receive what you are praying for. Mm. Pray. pray no, yeah, yeah, pray. Some. Don't pray that, uh, oh, I wish that tomorrow I will have a cake. Yeah. Pray in the same, thank you for the cake that I'm going to have tomorrow. Mm. That's a different way to pray. Because yeah. you are projecting so much of what you would like to have. That actually is what Tina says. If you're putting the intention on going there, then it's a matter of actually just finding out where, how you're going to get there. The sure thing, more or less sure, but anyway, is that you're going to get there. Finding the steps on how to get there is finding the goals. So I'm entering into a new terminology. Vision, 
goals. Goals is something more short term. Okay. I, I was trying to. Yeah. <laughs> to okay. Close. I'm going back to what I would like to explain as another, let's say, small design would be I am right here and me with my group, we would like to know how, how we will be in five years. That's very useful. I totally suggest doing that. It's counter logic to Greek mentality <laughs> and to most of the Balkan mentality and I'm struggling with that and Poliniki struggles with that and Nicola struggles with that and Tina, I can't... Yes, I struggle. Uh, yeah, yes, we, struggle. we guys who like design, we're struggling with short-term thinking. We like long-term thinking. <laughs> Um, and we can go in deeper issues about that. Why? Maybe our uh, zodiac sign or something <laughs> like that. I start finding that also my zodiac sign uh, is, uh, is, uh, accepting, is affecting that. But anyway, it's something that is proved that it helps. So let's say that we want to do that and see how we're going to be in five years. And we can take uh, Dragon Dreaming, U Theory, and uh, the Permaculture Principles and whatever, and try to design what we would like to steps that the milestones we would like to have in five years. That's another social permaculture design. Why? Because I'm using the ethics, I'm using uh, probably in our work, we're both using care for the earth, care for the people and fair sharing between each other and the, and the earth. We are using some of the permaculture principles and we are planning and we are designing, okay? And we are designing what for? For the regeneration of our own ecosystem and the ecosystem around us. Maybe something I didn't mention and it's, I can see in Deborah's uh, <laughs> like, what the fuck did you say right now? <laughs> Yeah, I'm still looking on the dragon dreaming, but yeah. <laughs> I am, um, so also to mention, this is a session that's supposed to be lasting one day in a normal permaculture design course. Mm -hmm. I am concentrating and now a one day, or I would say I've done 10, year, 10 days course on social permaculture in one hour and a half. So I'm going to be bombarding you with information and tools and whatever you would like to keep it, whatever you can just leave it or come to me afterwards. I'm completely too open about, I'm freaky about this stuff. I have all the books which exist about this stuff. <laughs> and Polynikis is coming to my library and saying, can I borrow this? Can I borrow this? And still he's on the process of taking things. A lot of books. A lot of books. Yeah. <laughs> Little time. And um, so social permaculture for me is designing for the social regeneration. What means social regeneration for me? Also, there is no uh, uh, definition you will find in the dictionary yet. For me, is to design for the well-being of the elements which consist the social ecosystem. If we are us, the well-being of us. If it's a group, it's the well-being of the group. But at the same time, for the well-being of the ecosystem around this, uh, this uh, what we are designing for. If it's our group, we are both designing for our well-being and the well-being of the village and the well-being of the bioregion, the well-being of everybody around it. In this way, we can be regenerative. If we're only designing about us, probably we're going to be taking more than what we offer. We'll be taking more than what? But what we offer back then. So have you offered a definition of regeneration at some stage? I did in the first first session we did with uh, Nicolas, but it's good if you would like to give your own definition yeah. as well. My definition is uh, a regenerative system. In a regenerative system, you put in more energy than what you take, so that the system has enough resources to start replicating and regenerating itself. Mm. Very nice. It's different from what I gave in the definition. So that's always, that's a concept that I use also, you know, when explaining to volunteers who come to our, to our project, um, because it's very difficult. People, people are used to consuming and taking and taking. Mm -hmm. So it's more about getting into a mentality and a state where, okay, what does it mean to give more than you take? What would it mean? So if someone's a volunteer, right? And they're coming to your farm. What, how do you explain to them? give more than you take. What would that mean to you? Just some ideas. 
So what are the resources that we're using, right? Time is one. Mm. Give more time. When, when people were coming to our project, we spent a lot of time explaining things to them, mm. right? So they were taking a lot of time. So in order for us to feel like, okay, we can, we can start regenerating ourselves, then we need pe for people to be putting in more time than what we've allocated so that it can uh, make up for the time that we've lost in the system, for example, for the work that we've done. It could mean... Uh, I cover need. the personal need. Pardon? I cover the personal need. I need to do that. It's my it's personal need. What do you mean? In terms of why, why, uh, why I want to be volunteer. Right. Mm. Yes. Yes. But we're talking about physically, like the, the actual time put into something as one thing to measure, like how do we give more than what we take? Mm. It could be in terms of the uh, financial contribution. Mm. So, for example, a lot of volunteers were coming, uh, coming. So we were feeding them, accommodating them, giving them our time. And they weren't contributing anything financially, which for us, I mean, the, the whole concept of volunteering, we had to reassess and redesign because it wasn't regenerative for us. It was actually degenerative for us. Mm -hmm. It was actually taking a lot of our resources. Mm -hmm. So we found that we were giving our time, our energy and everything like that. And then we had people uh, not giving back enough so that we could move forward. We we're always back. So we had to figure out a way, okay, so we, we thought, okay, what's a fair amount so that we're not at least going out of pocket? Would 10 euros a day be okay? So it's like starting to design and adjust these systems uh, in order to become regenerative. Mm. There's a lot of factors to consider in this. Mm. I can give another example of that. Mm -hmm. I used to work, uh, I started with some uh, in an educational center called Sunseed. Okay, it's in south of Spain. So this project, it's not regenerative, it's sustainable. Mm. And why I'm saying that? In terms of social terms, okay? <coughs> For the environment, it has done some regeneration work, but in a social term, on the relationship with the village and the villagers, and generally for the people coming and going, I personally think that as much as the people give, this is as much as they take back. Mm. And they expect that. But that means, as Tina said, that is nothing is left for the organization for the future. So because this place is run by volunteers and there is no owner of the place, the volunteers who come there, they would like to attain as much resources as they put in. So once there is no owner, the people would like to not take advantage, but have this kind of relationship of like, okay, I'll put that much. Nobody, I don't know who is going to be there afterwards. So I'm gonna put that much and take that much back. Mm -hmm. I did the same thing. I didn't. I don't know. I don't uh, mean I did something different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm just giving feedback to myself that this project, this project, has the same problems for 25 years of existence because of exactly this kind of scheme. There is no owner with a stable vision that can actually give more energy than it that he, he uh, takes from the project in order to be regenerative on the social aspect. Mm. So volunteers come and go, they consume what already exists. So this project is still a baby mm. and it's gonna continue to be a baby as long as the social structure doesn't change. Mm. Are we familiar with architecture? Mm. Yes? As what? As a, as a, as a, as a, as a actually a most, <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, but exactly. are you familiar how much you're affected by it in your everyday life? Uh, no. Okay. no. No. I would like to <laughs> restate that how are the buildings are built, the roads, uh, yeah, everything yeah. around us, it has been designed most of the times in the Western society by, sub, by somebody and most of the times an architect. And this is a whole science of how actually the design affects our lives. Yeah. Mm. By living in a building that is badly designed, we are most likely to be depressed and sad, etc., yeah. etc. By building, by living in a building that is well designed to meet other people, to have a lot of light, to have very good heat, etc., etc., we are more likely to be happy and cover mm. our needs. Mm. Okay. This is the same thing in a social aspect. Mm. 
if a design, if a social structure is properly designed, there and for the well-being of the elements of its members, it's most likely that this uh, social system will thrive. Let's go to some uh, examples of uh, how we can uh, uh, regeneratively be in a social way. Mm -hmm. Okay? Can you help me with the blue tack or the tape? Yes. Uh, I've got the pegs right you here never next to you. Never start Ah, the pegs. Okay. Can you help me with it? Yes. Thank you, Tina. Nice to have you here. Okay. Can you see something? I will be talk. I will be explaining them. But ah, uh, I don't know. So one day that I had quite some inspiration and I was alone in an apartment in Athens, quite sad, <laughs> and I wanted to find uh, something creative to do and uh, something regenerative for me and for the courses that I was about to give in the future. I took uh, this uh, poster and I mapped the things that for me is connected to social permaculture. Okay, and some of them give answers to what we can do in each uh, uh, sector. And I would invite Tina to spread this map more, to her connections with social permaculture. Okay? So in each thing that I'm saying, if you have more connections, you can either also, add them here directly with the market, uh -huh. or just uh, talk about okay. them. Great. I like we were exactly in this kind of position to not, how many years ago? Three years ago. Two or three. Might three. be four. Saturday. <laughs> and we were teaching about exactly the same thing in a project in Athens. The evolving cycle project. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Oh, Calmy Garden. In Calmy Garden. So, um. Social permaculture. Let's start from the concept of zone zero zero. Do you remember zone zero? Yeah. yeah. So zone zero is the living zone. Where we start. Yeah. From because it could be also the entrance. It can be many things. What? Where, zone zero zero. What when it is? Well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Where it's starting, starting, starting from, from, from the inside. The it's us. Yeah. It's us. It's, it's us inside. Zone zero zero. So it's a. Uh, I think somebody, a permaculture guy, thought it's funny. Or uh, anyway, for me, I like the concept of zone zero zero. Always think that actually we are designing something, but we there's something inside us which moves us to design things. So, um, what can we do about our zone zero zero? How can it be regenerative? How can ourselves be regenerative? Okay, I've just mapped a few things. Patterns. As, as many as patterns there is outside of us, that many of patterns there is inside of us. There we can enter in many psychological theories about patterns, etc., etc. But not only about our emotional state, about our energy state, etc. We can also observe how our patterns of behavior are affected by the outside patterns. About the weather, about how often we are with people, about how often we do our activity. So, if we can observe these patterns and design accordingly, use these patterns, we can actually regenerate ourselves. It's a tool of self uh, helping our uh, self uh, help no self uh, self care self care. Thank you, Tina. It's a it's a pattern of self care. Okay, mm -hmm. is it understandable more or less? Let's mm -hmm. give an example. I myself, when I used to be in this uh, sad, uh, lonely apartment in Athens because uh, anyway of many things, I started making a diary of uh, what was the weather outside, what I did in this day, what did I eat, 
if I drank coffee or not because I was I didn't like that I was drinking coffee I was trying to see if I need to give up on that or not mm -hmm. and uh, if I met anybody or not so I made this and I found the profound that when it's sunny and I'm outside and I'm with people I'm more happy mm -hmm. so I started doing that more and I actually got out of this trap hole also from this uh, house but also from this trap I was in of uh, repeating the same pattern of waking up and just being inside. So the, before that he had to observe. Mm. So part of zone zero zero is observation. Observing where you feel good, where you don't feel so good. What are the things that you like doing? What are the things that you don't like doing? What are the things that you want to change just in general that are not working for you? Because we do get trapped in patterns. We get trapped in patterns within ourselves. Uh, I know that I get trapped in loops of repeating thoughts. Mm. Uh, I, I know that I have patterns that I have inherited from my parents about how relationships are carried out. I didn't have a good example, so it took me many years to identify this and be able to do something about breaking it. Um, there's lots of tools around um, rewiring our synapses in our brains mm. to change our behaviors so for me that the whole understanding of this inner world took me along a journey of figuring out and getting some tools for self-care mm. so different healing modalities different ways of identifying like for example like even the non-violent communication or compassionate communication which we're going to go into that was a, a a great tool for helping me break the pattern of communication that i had that wasn't working so it's like okay i'm about to communicate something i've got a new tool let's let's use this instead of falling back into the pattern it's a process like it's an ongoing process you can't achieve it straight away and i think it's going to be an ongoing process for the rest of our lives because new tools come in new modalities new ways of healing, uh, more instant ways of healing, mm. like through the breath releasing. Like I was asked to write a feedback yesterday from our facilitators in like release work, mm. you know, give us feedback on how it worked for you. And I did, a, I, I did an assessment and like went back and go, okay, it helped me in how I communicated. It helped me because it gave me a tool that I can use on my own without relying on anyone else. Because that was another pattern I noticed. As soon as I was struggling with something, I would go for help. Oh, who's going to help me now? Is it a psychotherapist? Is it an inner child worker? Is it a theater healer? Is it a... I've tried gazillion things. But then I really wanted to uh, figure out some tools that were able to help me without having to go to anyone. Not that that makes it obsolete going to someone because I think the, the, the mere fact that we exist in community together means that we're here to support each other too, right? But how can we make this whole um, process more energy efficient? For ourselves and mm. more pleasurable. I like the term space. Yeah. Horus. Yeah. When I take care of myself, I have space to be able to take care of others. That's something that it took me a long time to understand, but I have understood that is as important as eating. You know, to to have space for myself creates. Seriously, I can like feel it. Yes, we can. Yes, I can really feel that I have space to accept what the other person is bringing in, and in this way, I can actually be regenerative. Mm -hmm. Because if my well-being is okay, I can take care of others, and if I can take care of others, then the other person has space to take care of others, and then it goes on. If we can't take care of others and other people can take care of others and it goes on like a... This, this whole concept of space is very fascinating and I've done a whole... In fact, Elias and I were talking about creating a session called Spaces Where the Magic Happens. Mm -hmm. I heard this during a meditation and it, and it inspired a, a rhyme. I won't say the whole rhyme, but the song is... Give space for life to flow through your body. Give space for love to flow through your heart. Give space for quiet. To enter your mind, give space to embrace life as a knot. Space is where the magic happens. 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 This whole concept of space is not, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's how do we give space to our mind to have new ideas. How do we give space 
for our heart to start opening? How do we give space to ourselves to take in new information? How do we give space in our environment so that other people can come in and collaborate? How do we give space in our collaboration? Like space is like a huge, if you start thinking about it, like it just expands into space. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the ability I don't have. Go to space. <laughs> Great. Do you do you get more or less the the, the patterns and self care mm. and how it's connected with permaculture and regenerability? Mm. And and one more, like really, just like how many times do we find ourselves getting into the pattern of doing things for others, mm. and then all of a sudden we're starting to feel this frustration. We don't know where that frustration is coming from. It's because we're not actually meeting our own need. And this is something that we'll talk about in Compassionate Communication, mm. which is also about understanding. And, and it's, a, it's zone zero, zero. Mm. Like communicating what our true needs are, our true feelings. And taking responsibility. I would say in zone zero, zero, personal responsibility. Mm. I've, here, I've added also to, to lead the change, mm -hmm. what I mean of alternative types of leadership. So another thing that uh, regeneration is to happen is needed is alternative types of leadership mm. so we are tired of the leaders that we already have so let's create other models of leadership that are participatory leadership embodied leadership and there is new theories coming all the time about how we can actually be leaders in our groups in our societies without uh, uh, overusing, no, um, taking bad use of the power that we have. Because we all have power. Mm. That's, let's accept that. We all have power. And it comes from our privileges. It comes for just being humans and be able to cut a, a plant off or kill an animal. We all have the power. And the thing is, what do we do with it? So alternative styles of leadership can actually regenerate the social systems we are in. Leadership itself, it's not bad. The way leadership is used is what creates problems. Mm -hmm. That's something that has to do again about zone zero zero. Then self-care leads to uh, alternative uh, ways of taking care of our health. That is also connected to medicinal plants, to alternative healing, as Tina was saying. And health it has to do with the ecosystems in general, but also inner ecosystems. So we start thinking, thinking about health outside and inside and connect these two. As I was saying with Nicolas, I am healthy because I find myself in a healthy environment. If I am in a sick environment, probably I will be sick as well. These two things are connected. How to be healthy in a sick system, like uh, I think you were saying. Uh, yeah, I think it's Krishna Murti said, uh, Krishna Murti that said, it's no sample of health to be well adjusted yes. to a profoundly sick society. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. no measure of health. That's what it is. Yeah. It is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. Yeah. Can you tell me the name again? Krishna Murti. Krishna Murti. Okay. Jidu. Jidu. Yeah, this made me feel comfortable with myself not mm. feeling well mm. when I was living in, in a sick system. Because mm. it's totally logical and okay to not feel well in this kind of mm. system. Uh, feel outsider, feel weird, feel all these things that we have been told and raised with, ah, you're different or whatever. Yes, we are because we don't fit in a sick system and we don't feel well in that. We're just realizing that. And I think one of the biggest aha moments for me was when I went to a friend and I said, John, I said, I'm feeling like, I, I, I don't know what's going on. It said, I, I, I'm either crazy, it's either me that's crazy or everybody else is crazy. Yeah, okay. And he said, wait, wait, Come I've on. got a book for you. So I started reading this book. It was called Awareness uh, by a um, Jesuit priest called uh, Jesuit. Anthony de Mello. Oh. Anyway, Awareness. <laughs> and I, I read, read, and about page six, I think it says, if you find yourself wondering whether you are crazy or whether everybody else uh -huh. is crazy, you are on the right path. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's it. It. So, you know, just to put things into perspective, because we often feel like we're going crazy in a society which doesn't support our natural rhythms, our natural functions, our natural spaces, our natural anything. So for me, the whole process of, you know, get reaching of life has mm. been discovering those things.
and doing different things and doing different courses and talking to different people and designing a lifestyle where I'm doing what I love with people that I love being around, like now. This is our purpose. This is, yeah. The purpose of life is this thing. It's to just have fun about. and just be Observe doing what you love. Yeah, world. exactly. I like Bruce Lee. He <laughs> say, uh, <laughs> le learn yourself, be yourself, and then communicate your knowledge with the next generation. Yes, and this is part of also our responsibility, right? So I, th I feel like an ethical responsibility is not just to gather, gather information. Mm. Part of designing a regenerative ecosystem is to give back that information to share this. and to share this mm -hmm. so it becomes and this is why we're doing all of this for this many years but we love doing this we love it we're good at it we keep expanding we keep uh, learning, ourselves. learning ourselves throughout the whole process every every workshop is different it's never the same you might use the same posters but <laughs> <laughs> but every workshop is different exactly. i guarantee that yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> The last thing I will add in the zone zero zero is our connection with nature. So the whole question that I had since I was 18 was like, do humans are part of nature or are we something paranatural? It was a question that I was really deeply touched by and I kept reading books to find the answer to that. But the answer to that came not by reading books, but only many years after when I actually started cultivating the soil, start cultivating, <laughs> that I did feel the connection <laughs> with nature. By just observing a small tomato growing from a seed to giving me what I eat and I live from, I felt the connection. I felt that I am part of that. Because if that thing was not existing there, I couldn't be able to survive. So we are part of the cycle. And the more I grow, the more I learn about Gaia, the more I learn about our role in the ecosystem, and I think it's a beautiful session also to do like we humans, our role in the ecosystem and how we can have this positive fit footprint that I was talking about also with Nicolas. The more I understand that I am part of this ecosystem. The only thing is that the, some of my ancestors made the wrong choice of what they thought it was their part mm. of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I don't have to make the same choice. I'm just part of it. There's nothing paranormal on me and from the shit I'm taking out and from the food I'm putting in, everything is natural. So how I am not natural? Mm. So it's the connection that comes through maybe indigenous knowledge that indigenous people still keep this basic knowledge that we are part of that and we give gratitude to that and we are children of the earth, etc., etc. Or from more modern theories coming from a more westerners perspective like deep ecology, and uh, other more eco-psychological uh, uh, ap uh, approaches. Depends where you want to get in. The, 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 the result is the same. We are one. We are, we, are, we are part of the system. Even if we want to, we can't be out we of the system. We are the system. Yeah. We are the ecosystem. That's a really strong message that I got from watching this documentary. I think I mentioned it briefly the other day. It's called Isolated. I remembered the name. And it follows the, the Zoe tribe, Z-O-E, um, in the Amazon mm -hmm. that shows how these people are part of the ecosystem and not something separate. They are the ecosystem. I mean, they're not I mean. even a part of. We are. We are. <clears throat> And we don't feel guilty, we don't feel all these feelings that we have about, okay, when we come, ah, should I destroy these uh, pieces of soil and whatever? No, no, I am part of that and I know what I'm doing here. Mm. It gives a lot of power. It mm. will empower us to be what we are supposed to be mm. and not feel small. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about 30 minutes reminder. To be honest. We are good on time. Thank you, Vidente. So let's talk about alternative communication and organization. So I'm still using alternative, as Paul Nicky said. We can say creative. And I agree with the term of uh, Tina. If I make another poster, I will uh, put creative. Um, so there is. This is our tool. Different tools that we can use when you when we come together as groups and we want to do something together. That's actually the definition of groups. Bunch of people come together and they have a purpose of coming together. Okay, have you found yourself in groups that you were frustrated and you feel you're doing nothing or you broke the group? <laughs> or the group broke? Or the group broke you? The group broke you? Or yeah. The, yeah, everybody? Okay. Do you think that sometimes was lack of tools 
of appropriate tools to solve the situations you found in? Sometimes. Sometimes. I say sometimes. I didn't say that most of the time. No, no, no. I say sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel that the need, that the use of tools or and consciousness of what's going on in the group processes would have helped you maybe that this group will not break apart or that you will not leave from the group? Yes and no. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes I think there's a confusion between personality clashes and tools. No. Yes. There might be a confusion. Some people, you know, you might think that, okay, I'm not getting along with this person because we just don't get along. Our chemistry is bad or whatever. Yeah. But is it maybe a matter of having a better tool? And it's a matter of understanding that I'm getting along with the role of this person in the group rather than the person itself. Yeah. Okay. Does this and person also, really uh, want to be there? If you are gathering for the same region. That's also part of using a right tool to, to re precisely write down the vision we all have and we consent on. Yes. So still, I mean, you can tell me a thousand cases. Probably I'm this kind of guy who will find the appropriate tool that maybe should have been used to, to actually, uh, that actually the group would be healthy. A posteriori what? captain. Yes. The captain a posteriori. <laughs> yes, I'm a posteriori, like, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> captain <laughs> obvious. Yeah, like, uh, okay. So I am um, organizing in Greece a, a educational courses co uh, about facilitation of groups. Mm. The facilitation of groups is uh, a group of theories and tools mm. that have helped specific communities to thrive uh, in Spain and in USA. So once it was started uh, in uh, Spain, there was a guy called Ulysses who brought in many different theories uh, from um, alternative uh, structures in USA. And also he was to be a physician, mathematician, also social worker. So he combined uh, process work and many other theories together, nonviolent communication. And it's a multi-approach uh, technique that brings this all together and create a, tool, uh, a toolbox for people who would like to facilitate group processes. Mm -hmm. And it's a three years training that people that go out of this training, they can call themselves professional facilitators and they can facilitate processes for other groups. I would, only know, I would only like to mention that this thing in Spain has its own institute and it's called Institute de Facilitación de Iberia, um, the Peninsula Iberica, uh, IFACE. Uh, there is the institute in Italy, and we are now trying to set up something similar in Greece. Uh, this is a grassroots movement. There is no central organization in that. And uh, the school of this has been the, the community that I lived in there for some months, and it has been the foundation of this, which has been Lacabe, which has been an uh, eco-village of 45 years thriving, still thriving, because of the use of facilitation. Where is Navarra? Navarra. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And facilitation is widely accepted, but right now in Europe, as a method, as a toolbox that, the, that people that have this can facilitate, and they're able to facilitate difficult processes. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about now a 15 days training course. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about life choices of people who share the whole economy mm. and their whole life with other people. And when we're talking about conflicts, we're talking about serious conflicts, like conflicts of life. And these people have been trained and equipped to sustain these kind of conflicts and bring in uh, tools in order to, to, to resolve them and bring awareness. Okay, so if you want to look up more into that, you can come to me afterwards. And, uh, but I definitely suggest entering the websites of each, of uh, IFACE, of uh, Cursos de Facilitazione in Italian, facilitation.gr in Greek, and you can read more about our approach. So I am being trained in this, and I am the organizer in that, and I really believe in the use of tools in order for cooperatives and communities to thrive. He's an excellent facilitator, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer him. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I, um, I have a bad experience in order to search for the solution. Yes. I had the bad experience in many horizontal groups of being left out, 
no, no emotional space, no space for solving conflicts, uh, facing racism and uh, discrimination between women and men, etc., etc. All these things I was all the time being facing in front of me, and I had just the feeling of injustice, but I didn't know where it was coming from until I learned about privileges, about processes, about emotional spaces, and that all these things should be normal and we should have been taught in school how to exactly. do these things but we just got the, 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 the wrong end of the stick and we, we learned about competition mm. and if mm. we learned about competition the whole lives we're gonna be competing who is better inside a group while we want to cooperate mm. and that's ah mm. ah mm. <laughs> so I learned by the hard way that there can be another way and I'm that's let's say it's one of my missions that I'm bringing into the world to bring tools of how to collaborate to uh, to uh, create cooperatives to create groups to create communities and that they can thrive mm. that's also my personal project it's called community lab it's like bringing tools of how we can thrive as communities and as groups. Um, so one of the alternative uh, management of groups, etc., has to do, and I'm very deeply affected by the facilitation of groups. Of course, this is a multi-tool approach. There is also one tool approach about groups. For example, my friend Stella, which is also here in Hanya, she is accredited by the Nonviolent Communication Center in America, with the from the nonviolent communication approach and she deals with all kinds of things from personal conflicts group conflicts or personal issues only with a nonviolent communication approach and it's working for her i don't say that one is better than the other one so one thing also how to deal in personal relationships in our relations as you said you with Elias, me with maya whatever i do try to use nonviolent communication and believe me it does make things better. Mm. It doesn't solve all the issues of the world. Mm. I don't think it's a very good conflict resolution tool. Once you are on fire, mm. maybe you have to go through your emotions and go through the fire and then sit down and talk, so talk about your needs. So I'm not sure that is actually the best tool for all the cases. But my experience shows that for preventing conflict, wow, yeah. very good yeah. tool for preventing conflict. Yeah. Expressing our needs, Talking about our requests, wow, a revolution in how the communication has been done until now, since we are kids. Mm. You're going to learn more about that in the afternoon with Tina. I'm not going to talk more about that. Sociocracy, where is it? Sociocracy. You're going to learn more about that with Tina. Just a disclaim, disclaim, no, an intro, intro phrase is that it is a consent-based uh, organizational tool that uses circles based on specific domains and aims of the circle in order to make organization horizontal organizations be efficient. Not just horizontal organizations, but efficient organi uh, organizations. Big companies use this tool to be efficient. It has been studied academically that it is more efficient than hierarchical tools. Why? Because all people have voice an opinion and they feel more satisfied by their work and they work better when they are more satisfied by their work. A very nice book on that is All Voices Matter mm. and it talks about sociocracy, mm -hmm. a suggestion. Another one is to use um, the principles that I saw in the first day to make decisions other personal but also as a group. So I have a dilemma and then Mm. What should we do? Okay, let's use the integrate rather than the segregate principle and let's involve this person rather than just throwing it out. Let's say. Or, let's say, we're having trouble on finding finances. Let's use the huge edges and value the marginal and let's go on the edge of our uh, ideology or whatever and let's value that actually we are connected with the company that also would like to do green uh, Wash. uh, washing stuff and let's take their money and use it for our own purpose we are using our edge is it inside our edge let's use the edge probably there's a good resource there mm -hmm. 
Are we tired of our work? Let's obtain a yield. Let's go outside and have fun and have food and celebrate what we have already have been doing until now. So, let's, these are guidelines that can make our life maybe better. Um, and then I put some stuff about uh, roles and the group as a garden, which is also, you can find some stuff uh, on the internet about that. And uh, degrowth, I think I will move it in the alternative economy. It's okay, I'll talk a bit more about that. Degrowth. Degrowth. Mm -hmm. You want to add more about no. tools? I'm not sure I'll have how much time we'll have for sociocracy and if that's going to happen. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Is that people interested in finding out more about it? Yeah. I, I, I know. Ah, oh, okay. All right. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Polynikis is waiting for a course of sociography for the past one and a half years. Ah, no. Uh, but right. are you going to talk no about pressure. it in the evening <laughs> session or to no. just now? Uh, no, the, no, this evening session is about just compassion and communication. Oh, okay, so but we can do, we can try and fit in. There is like space next week to do stuff. Maybe. And if there is a need for that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. One tool that I learned in a sociocracy meeting was that the most important meetings in an association, the most important insights and collective ideas sometimes happens in the coffee table. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I, I was, even if you struggle to fit into the program, you know, I think that... <laughs> we can have, that's what I said to Daniel, because he was the first one to express some interest in the social permaculture, uh, sorry, the mm. sociocracy thing. Yeah. And maybe we can have it as a conversation over lunch. Mm -hmm. I mean... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Sure. Cool. Let's pack up also lunch, guys. <laughs> good, good job of finding no free time. <laughs> Why were you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me more about sociology. <laughs> I would vote for next week. <laughs> you find the proper space next week. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about alternative economy. Economy for me, it's a very important thing that we as uh, putting again, alternative people should not forget about that we need to regenerate also this part of ourselves. Mm. So let's see different approaches to economy that can lead to a more regenerative economy if this term is actually proper to use. But let's try to, to go this way. Okay. Um, I actually haven't found a proper book about regenerative economy outside there. If you have, you can propose to me. But me, definitely I haven't found one. Uh, so, degrowth. Has anybody uh, heard about degrowth? Mm -hmm. Yes, everybody has heard about degrowth. Yeah, me. Uh, so, it's a theory which says actually the obvious that we are living on a planet that has limited resources yeah. and capitalism is based scientifically by the, its uh, own, uh, you know, X, Y, Z uh, things. It's taking into consideration that we have unlimited resources. So which one is right? We don't have unlimited resources, so we need to change our economical system. And the basic factor of, the basic drive of capitalism is growth. Okay, what all the politicians are talking about. So the degrowth movement, which is both the academic movement and the grassroots movement, is talking about taking the system as it is, not demolishing it, but making it smaller. How do you make a system smaller? How do you make a financial system smaller? You, de you decrease the growth uh, factor of it. All the factors that show how well our economy is in a capitalistic system should be negative mm -hmm. <laughs> in order for this system to degrowth. Okay, it's as Nicholas was saying at some point, I don't know if you were there, but we were talking with Vasiliki about that that we are doing something wrong. And if we keep putting more input and our financial system is actually worse, we're doing something wrong. Mm. Let's see that we are doing something wrong and let's go the other way probably. And the other way is to make things smaller. Uh, you can read a, a lot about concrete proposals of how actually this financial system can degrow. Uh, I am very big fan of the degrowth movement and I've read and I totally support that on the financial and I try to uh, approach that also in my everyday life. Um, exchange networks, is anybody part of an exchange network? Exchanging things? 
instead of buying things. With the I, okay. Informal yes. exchange yeah, networks. Yeah. Informal. Yes? Yeah. Are you exchanging things with your uh, friends or uh, community or just buying things all the time? <laughs> Clothes. <laughs> Clothes, <laughs> food. food. Killing. Hmm? Killing. Killing, services. Mm -hmm. It's something that uh, for me, it, it, it's not an exchange of financial value, economical value there. So it doesn't add up to this whole uh, system. Uh, solidarity economy, and one example is crowdfunding. So it's just giving for when it's needed from my own surplus to, to serve a cause uh, that is greater than just my own interest. For example, Dina had made the translation of the permaculture book to the crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. uh, Kali has organized a trip to, uh, to Africa with bicycles mm -hmm. to go give uh, material to children through a crowdfunding. Uh, amazing things can be done by crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. uh, but also solidarity economy is that I would like to uh, buy a trimmer for my... Um, from my field and I don't have enough money for that and I ask the community if they can donate to me and uh, or you can look at ways of sharing tools I mean yeah. that's one of the visions that we have is like having a tools library where not <laughs> everybody has to buy their own tools and especially <laughs> machinery where everybody's responsible they all we have, there's a common budget everybody's responsible for its ma their maintenance and the use and not everybody has to buy one like especially mm. things in the bigger bigger machineries like mm. machinery like tractors or if you need tractors or like a, a wood chipper mm, would be a better chipper. example <laughs> wood chipper like not ev not everybody needs to have a wood chipper because most of the time it's just sitting around not doing anything yeah so you know that's a that's a great way to that's one of the things that i'd, I'd have in mind i think that we yeah. are on building a tools library yes soon we are on track yes mm. we, are on this. we started small Yes. Not the tractor yet, but we'll, if we need, we're good. Or a wood chipper or something, yeah. yeah. Well, Love, I mean, it's so, <laughs> and, and all of this, you've got to remember, like, one of the basic, basic uh, principles of design is using small and slow solutions. We don't have to have all the solution worked out in our head, but we need to know what we're doing right now mm. to start us towards that journey. Low-tech labs. Low-tech labs. Mm. Yeah. Also, it is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Workshops about repairing bicycles or use a piece of a bicycle in order to produce uh, other kind of mm -hmm. objects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More ideas, more yeah, ideas. Re reusing, we do that. Our whole project set up on upcycling. The workshops, for example. I now have buy some big machines to treat wood. So a lot of people around that already know me about my uh, my work. They say, oh, I want this, I want that. Mm. Okay, you have skills? Yeah. Come to my workshop, take the key, work, leave it as it mm -hmm. is, and then it's okay. Because uh -huh. I don't have more time, for example. Come and mm -hmm. make mm -hmm. an open for mm -hmm. the community or, workshop. Mm. Or leave it, like, uh, I think, like, as an example of regenerative and alternative economy, just the concept of um, leave it in a better space, mm -hmm. in a better condition mm -hmm. than what you yeah, found yeah, it. Yeah. So a better condition, this is the thing what I said, mm. I forgot to say before about the regenerative concept. So if you, if you plant the concept of the volunteers coming to your project and asking them to leave it in a better condition than what you found it, then, the, then they'll start thinking about, okay, how can we leave a legacy here? What's something that we can build here that we can leave that was going to serve the project? That would make it regenerative, mm. for example. Yeah. So give more than what you take. Give more than what you take, exactly. Mm. Community supported agriculture. Mm. How many people know about that? The boxes thing? It's no, not only the boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. That's, uh, you have to try to understand it. Mm, the basket. Yeah. The basket, the basket, the basket thing. The basket thing. So That's the, a product. Of the, the, the idea mm. is that the consumers <laughs> gather around and they guarantee for sure. an uh, ag uh, agriculture mm. that for the next year or so they will have stable consumption. That's, uh, guarant that's making the life of agriculture better, that creates more trust between the consumers and the agriculture, that uh, gives power to the consumers to decide upon what they would like to eat mm -hmm. and what would like to be produced by the agriculture, and that gives respect to the work of actually cultivating the land and a fair payment for that. Mm -hmm. 
there's different ways of, uh, uh, mm -hmm. of, of, of designing this. In Hungary, when I uh, spoke with a friend who's been working on mm -hmm. this, their contribution is yearly, the person who wants mm -hmm. to buy the vegetables. And this contribution isn't a, a direct exchange for the value of the produce that they're buying only. Mm -hmm. So they're not just buying the produce. They are actually, with their contribution, uh, contributing to the payment of the people mm. harvesting, mm. Uh, to mm. the maintenance and purchase of equipment or tools. So it's a more uh, holistic... They're, they're also sharing responsibility if uh, there is a disaster mm. and they can't eat, they can't get vegetables from the farmer. They share in that, so they understand yeah. that they're not going to be receiving vegetables if there is a, a natural disaster. So that way it helps. But what here in Greece we found, like a, I've actually tried to start a, a community supported agriculture type process. I realized that that from the beginning is too much. So I had to use a small and slow solution, which was, okay, well, why don't we just order week by week yeah. and you're just paying for your produce for now. Yeah, okay. But as we're building the relationship and people start understanding yeah. and, you know, getting people to come into the process and, fig and see all the issues that are associated with cultivating. Then they start taking responsibility and they realize that, oh, not only is it fair, it's actually an absolute prerequisite that we're supporting our farmers on this level, on a higher level than just buying the produce. We're involved much more heavily. Uh, first, Elias, if you wanted to say something. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I want to, put, to, to focus, highlight the point that you said about um, evolving myself. So yes. the difference in, in my mind in CSA networks, uh, community support agriculture, is that you're not a producer anymore, you're part of the system of producing. Yes. In the, in the books they call it prosumers, that it's yeah. a bad word because yeah. the academics don't know how to write proper catchy words, yeah. but, <laughs> but you're actually part of the production from, from a point on. Uh, so that what you all yeah. said, totally apply, I totally agree. We, we got a small funding to start something like this here. We'll uh -huh. see how it goes, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but it will be on a slow and small scale. Yes. Well, because we're, we're, <laughs> we'll in a, see. we're in a different culture. Yeah, it's a, you know, like we it's need a completely to, different culture. It's a different beast. Which, also. which also this culture demands that we look at how we design. Like we want eco villages, right? We all like eco yeah. villages. We want to be living in community. But what form does this community take? I've observed and, and Christos and I have observed and been to other communities and everything like that. And we know, I know, for example, and my observation is that for the Greek culture, maybe living on the same piece of land isn't the ultimate solution. Everybody <laughs> wants to be the boss, right? So how do you, how do you adjust that um, uh, design? Mm. Well, uh, maybe the whole concept, like we talked about briefly the other day, of neighborhoods is better. So just the whole concept of a village, like we're used to villages. How can we use that concept of a village and design uh, consciously mm. our neighborhood with the people that, are, that we want to be around in terms of that can, maybe not we want to be around as such, but that we, that can fulfill certain roles. Mm. We can start thinking about that kind of thing, like inviting people in with specific skill sets so we can actually propel the evolution of mm. our community, whichever form this takes. Mm. If, if I, one small thing, sorry. Uh, the, 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 after um, getting in touch with Christos and Nicolas at one year and a half, because I had no clue about, not permaculture, not land, nothing, uh, it, it started making, making sense to me that when you want to make a field of a tree or something, you need to consider the soil. Mm -hmm. So in the, same, in the same state, you consider the culture and everything. So. If you don't take these things mm. into your design, as Christo said, probably the it's plants not yes, will not thrive. Yeah. Not even thrive, they will judge you. So, considering all these factors, probably it can work. Yeah. Or at least you have high chance of succeeding. And, and also knowing that you don't have to do all of this alone. Yeah. We've talked about this process, like this, this, this concept. Like, um, for us now, like we can tap into each other's knowledge and networks and we, we've got a very big network now. So we, 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 we can tap into those and make sure that we can offer right. an exchange maybe if we're feeling bad or if we can't pay them or yeah. whatever to just find different ways of collaborate, collaborating.
I was about to say that it's one hour and 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. The of the cool. I will uh, close the economy session and then we will go for a break. Mm -hmm. And then if when we come back, I can finish just this last thing which is left and then we can go on this exercise. Mm -hmm. How does it sound? Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. We have just five more minutes. So you can yeah. mm -hmm. Cool. Um, community support agriculture would be one of the elements that I will ask you afterwards if you would like to design for. Mm. Yes. So stay tuned for the, set, mm. for the next session. <laughs> and I'm really... <laughs> fair trade. Is anybody um, familiar with what is fair trade? Yes. Yeah. Okay, more or less I won't be talking a lot about that. Social cooperatives. Kinseps in Greek. Mm -hmm. in Greek. Social cooperatives. Okay. More or less. No, cooperatives big, that have yeah, a social one, fair trade, fair trade. Yeah. Um, yeah. so it's yeah. products being produced in most of the times in different parts of the world that when you when you are where you are right now and there is organizations which validate somehow that the conditions of how this product is being produced <coughs> is being done in a fair way for the producer mm. so that it arrives to you and it's not a product that is made out of blood Okay. Perfect. What? <laughs> yeah. 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 Choose what your free trade is. The <laughs> only product I trust is Zapatista's coffee because it's yeah. quite direct and uh, fair tra trade. It doesn't change the fact that it comes from the other side of the planet, yeah. uh, but it uh, changes how the workers and the producers are being paid and... Uh, I, 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 mean, yeah. I put that into that framework, but I would list... The, uh, I would put that in the list of the damage control, mm. not of regeneration. Mm. Mm -hmm. exactly. Okay? Can you get the difference? Mm. Like, I'm doing damage, how can I control the damage that I'm doing? I'm doing damage anyway from bringing a product from the outside of the world. How can I control the damage I'm doing if I choose Zapatista coffee or MSR uh, sugar or... Uh, I don't know and scotch uh, chocolate or stuff like that, you know? Anyway, um, so social cooperatives, I didn't have anybody that didn't really, has no connection with that, so I'm not gonna talk more about that. Alternative currencies, that's a controversial topic, but uh, we're not, I'm not gonna talk about Bitcoins and stuff like that, but uh, local alternative currencies that go parallel to the currencies that already exist have actually a big financial impact on one community and they can create a lot of abundance in the community and there has been examples of that okay for example czech community is using an alternative currency and communities around greece have been using in a local uh, for a while and then it stopped but mm -hmm. anyway anytime it has been used i except from personal conflicts and stuff that lead to failing I, the actual input of it, it's positive. Mm -hmm. And the last thing, it's time banks. I don't know if you heard of the concept of time banks, that I exchange time instead of money. Mm -hmm. Services, I give my service one hour, you give your service one hour, we are, we are much. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can put that in a system and go more complex and complex. Is that, all these are ways of actually getting away from the, the, using the monetary system to exchange goods and services. Yeah. And it goes back to to complete all of this. There's also the cashless society proposal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, who, if you remember, we, I was talking about the contributionism system um, that this guy from uh, created. Well, it's called contributionism, and it's the the concept is one small town can change the world. You remember, I was talking. Mm -hmm. We were talking. Who who wasn't here when I talked about it the other day? Okay, so it's it's basically designing a system whereby people are, uh, are contributing to a whole uh, community by providing three hours of work in exchange for uh, like energy, for example, and getting an exchange for, and getting also the, free, the produce that that community produces. Um, I won't explain a lot now. Uh, if you want more detail, maybe we can in the other break. But the whole point of this is as people are giving some time and getting more and more in exchange for that because the community is building and creating more uh, products and resources, then that starts freeing people from the necessity to have work. Were you here when we talked about it the other day? No. no. Okay. Um, 
because the time is limited, I won't, I won't go into it. But, uh, and this eventually leads to uh, a cashless society because you re people realize in this, in this construct that it's people producing things, not money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that one small town can change the world is something that you can look into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just one addition on the time bank. No. Because it's a perfect way to see also the inequality in value that we put mm. in uh, economic output. Because mm. then if you do one hour of, I don't want to demean anything, but I'm just saying one hour of playing music mm -hmm. and then this person gets paid for that in order to go with one hour to buy food, for example, then suddenly he sees that with his one hour of playing music, he actually cannot buy anything. Mm. Uh, so it's a really nice way because there have been many experiences that I have followed because it's a great idea. But then where it usually breaks down is at that point where someone who has been used to being paid, paid you know. well by doing a few hours mm. of work, suddenly he goes to buy with the same time food, very basic things. And he realizes that he has to work a lot more hours to mm. get food. <laughs> Okay, are we okay for having a break? Mm -hmm. yes. Is there any urgent questions? Something that is left open for somebody? How did you find the information so far? Is it useful? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think there is a process needed. Yeah, yeah just need for the process yeah. in mind. Yeah.